Good morning. Welcome to B Cube Sunday morning. Good and today morning. Is such a great day. I can't even tell you what a great day it well, I guess I can because I'm going to. We have got <laughs> Gene Turnbow. Now he runs sci-fi radio, like two billion listeners all <laughs> over the world tuning in hourly just to hear him. Uh or or maybe not. Maybe I exaggerate. <laughs> Where yeah, it's about a million listeners a year. Uh, we, it's uh, it's the uh, a million the listeners popular. a year. Yeah, uh, it's very good, but it's it's not two billion all at once. No, the world no, stops it's not. spinning. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's my job to exaggerate a little bit from time to time. I write fiction <laughs> and edit it, and I always tell the people who are writing for me one piece of advice: write over the top. Write it like you're shooting for the moon, because then you uh, uh, can always dial it back. But it's really hard to throw that level of enthusiasm into it if you don't have it there already. And we have Stephanie Wiper. Hello. Ooh. Stephanie has won. You have lots of claims to fame, Steph. I do. Oh yeah, but one of my you know what my favorite one is the what? very first book B Cube Press published. Uh spent number one on uh, uh Amazon's list for two weeks for uh and Stephanie was the very first reviewer to review it. any book that we ever published. Now, the, the downside is she gave us a four. Uh, well, it wasn't perfect. Yeah. But uh, anyway, and then Stephanie and Adam have both published with us a couple of times, and it's yes. been great. So, uh, but we're not here to talk about BQ Press so much as we are to talk about Patreon. Yes. Now, who's been on Patreon the longest? I started in 20, before 2020, I'd have to look for sure. How long have you been on, Adam? Uh, about 2019. Um, my wife felt me into it, and uh, I just said, are you crazy? But <laughs> that and Google Fund Me basically saved my life. Twice. Yeah. Uh, and, and I've been, uh, I'm trying to figure out when I've when I started. It's been a while. We've been operating uh we've been operating on Patreon since uh I guess 2000 <coughs> I want to say 2013. Okay, well you beat me cuz I just looked it up and I started in 2018. So time flies when you're making money. Eh, well, yeah. <laughs> hopefully <laughs> hopefully you are well now you guys are users and there are people out there that are saying hey would this work for me but and the, and you guys all have you know from the uh Hugh, you know you're just i mean you guys are all over the map with slightly different uh approaches to what you do how you do it etc what do you like about patreon Well, uh, I like the money every month is good. <laughs> I like the fact that it's it's approximately one third my income, so uh, I, I, I enjoy that, and I don't make a tremendous amount on pay, Patreon for a little, you know, uh, but um, uh, by the standards of it. But I love that it it kind of pays me uh, to do things which qualify as hobby. You know, uh, a lot of the stuff I post on Patreon is basically unpaid writing. But, yeah. you know, if I do it on Patreon, I have an excuse. Yeah, you know? and I, I got to start following uh, more Patreon accounts because uh amazing amount of great stuff comes from uh, uh, posting on Facebook and the like. So what about you, Gene? Uh, 
I like, well, first of all, uh, uh, I like the fact that it has been keeping my radio station on the air all this time. Uh, we have, our patronage is about, uh, right now it's at about $810 a month. And that pays for our writers and our DJs. We're the only internet radio station that pays our DJs, pays DJs. As far as I know, I've never seen another one. Uh, I have a production coordinator and she gets something every month. I would like to say that I get paid, but I don't get paid from this uh, because I'm using the money to keep the station alive. I'm... I like the fact that Patreon allows me to provide a variety of different perks and they have a they have a, an API uh, uh, an advanced programmers interface and I can integrate that with the services that we provide so that we can have members only posts on our website and members only streams on the radio station distributed both on our website and via discord and there's an there's a discord api uh there there's they actually have discord support built into patreon in the api so we can we can automate that we can actually have members only stuff that you can only get on discord if you are a member of our patreon oh. campaign so it's <clears throat> I, I love the integration. I love the fact that we can we can we can integrate our fundraising with directly with the various distribution channels we have. And I think Patreon is probably the most advanced service uh, going with respect to that. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Well, to what he's talking, what the other two have have kind of mentioned is that with Patreon, um, I can actually make money for stuff that I want to do. I can mm -hmm. put out my writing. I can write like my essays. I don't think anybody is going to want to uh, publish my thought provoking essays where I'm working through a situation of, for example, like homelessness. I, and I did one on Juneteenth and there's really no market for that, but I can put it up on Patreon. And so that uh, people will actually have an opportunity to read it mm -hmm. so it gives me um it gives me a place to put it out there in the market and people who like it can subscribe to the surface uh to the service and get more they get my story they have a a, a shop now so i can sell um a completed story for like five bucks and I really like the flexibility and it means I can just put my stuff out there and I have people that I know that's going to like it. I don't have to market as much, which mm -hmm. I suck at. Well, a lot of it has to do with your social circle. Uh, <clears throat> you, you, you have to, if you're going to do Patreon, you have to start with your own, you have to start with your own following. Excuse me a moment. Thank Bless goodness you. these microphones have a cough button. <laughs> uh, and that you can you can bring your friends in and your your followers in and hook them up with Patreon. Patreon isn't a place to start. Oh, it's a place to it's a place to go once you have your following already built. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, there are people who do a lot better than I do on Patreon. Um, I'm, I'm not, please understand that I'm not going to uh, give names here because because um, what I know, I, I, I really don't want held to uh, journalistic accuracy standards, you know. Uh, but my favorite example um is the well-known novelist and TV writer who gets forty thousand dollars a month? Ooh. And if he does not, oh, if he is not writing a novel or a screen, no, forget novel. If he's not writing a screenplay that month, um, 
that's a pretty goddamn great uh, base income. Oh, it sure is. That's, and, uh, that's impressive. And was, that's impressive. And then there was the person, um, multiple award-winning um, science fiction novelist, um, a name that w w that were I to name it, um, everybody would say, oh, sure, I know that person, um, who was a college professor who said mm -hmm. at one point, you like my novel? You like the novel I released three years before that? Well, if you want to see, uh, if you want to see a novel from me every year, I can't do that while being a college professor. I need, I need eight thousand dollars a month. That amount came in, at which point uh, uh, drew a line. At, the, on the, at that point, he quit his day job. <laughs> yeah, quit. That's awesome. You know, that's a great course, story. When the money comes in. I mean, when the when the novel com money comes in, that's an extra. When the movie money comes in, as it has, that's an extra, you know. But, but <laughs> the, uh, you know, like acting, writing is a uh, it, writing full time is a uh, is a game of paying your rent in between the paydays. And the it fact is. that she could say, "Whoops, she, sorry." If the, the fact <laughs> the fact that she could say, um, "I, you know, you already like me this much. If you want to, if you want to make it affordable for me to produce more than I have, then 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 go ahead and do so." And that she stopped and said, "Okay, that's all I need," is also very impressive to me. And again, everybody listening to this. And knowing uh, a, a little bit about science fiction would absolutely know this famous award-winning name. And it's not all that hard to find out if you want to do the extra research. I just don't want to say, wait a minute, you have the figures wrong or whatever. I, you know, So I just say mm -hmm. the fact that this exists is very good for that person, even if it makes me feel very inadequate. Because <laughs> I, yeah. I, I do a fraction of that. Well, know? I probably make the least amount of money uh, of the three of us here, I only get, I, I explain it. It's like I get a trip to the grocery store once a month. Yeah, which is, which is really good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it's is not it, a month worth least, of groceries. At, at least I hope it's a good trip to the grocery store. Oh yes. As opposed, as opposed to, I need to pick up uh, cat litter and go home with. Uh, oh, you know, all the stuff comes in, you know, but. Um, <laughs> But I, I, on the other hand, know somebody who's a writer, professional writer, um, who, who brags to me, and I do I, I do represent it as a brag because he takes it as an affirmation. He knows it's much less than mine. Uh, he makes enough to get lunch a, a once a month to yeah. go out and buy, you know, get a pizza lunch at some decent pizzeria. That's all he makes. He makes every once a month people buy him pizza, you know. So, you know, yeah. and he want and he wants there to be more. But at the very least, people care enough about me to do this, you know. So that's an affirmation. And if he gets uh, if he gets more professional credits, uh, he will get more of an affirmation. I I lose ten dollars. Somebody quits. Somebody quits for ten dollars, and I say, "Oh my God, they don't like me," you know. <laughs> or they downgrade their uh, membership from like ten to. Two yeah. or something, and you think, "Oh my God, what did I do? I apologize." Yeah. Well, one of the big challenges that we have is, uh, you know, people agree to be patrons, and then, uh, and then their payment gets declined because they've changed bank accounts or, oh yeah, you know, something like that. So we, I periodically have to rummage through the, you know, the disconnected patrons and say were you aware that uh, that your payment is being declined for this you know would you like to fix it <laughs> please well that you know i don't and and, and about that does that you know yeah and about, about one time in one time in four they say oh yeah oops and, I've and lost, other times you know other times they don't respond or whatever i've so. lost about 300 about 300 dollars over the last six months as a monthly pay whoa that's you know, and uh, part of this, 
Um, <laughs> it's not as great as it, yeah, really about a hundred dollars because somebody said I'll pay you two. You know, somebody said when I was had a cancer crisis, started doing two hundred dollars a month and and Ooh. declined and declined my two hundred. Uh, 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 yeah, declined my. Uh, uh, somebody said here may just be that they have budget changes. Yes, I. I oh mean, yeah, that happens. But uh, but but, uh, but somebody said I will do two hundred dollars a month for six months just to help you out. I see and a I, comment I, here. So I've lost uh, that. And so another $200, but still, you know, it's like watching something whittle. And I'm like, Ooh. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it, it can be harsh. And we've had, none of this we've is, had issues. Yeah. You none know, of because, this is guaranteed. None of this is guaranteed. No. Any it's like, is appreciated. We have a comment from uh, uh, a viewer, Cheryl Alexander, who says, yeah, I mentioned it that. just may be that budget changes have nothing to do with the person that they Patreon. And that's yeah. true. You know, stuff happens. Yeah, People have heart attacks and mm -hmm. changes of living situations, and yeah, lose a when job I was or something. When you I was know? still working, I did. I was one of the sci-fi radio patrons, um, but when I uh, um, went on disability, I did wasn't making as much money. So I'm sorry, uh -huh. Jean. I had to drop you. I'm yeah, sorry. well, there you go. That's that's <laughs> a perfectly valid reason. The uh, the gentleman who paid two hundred dollars a month, okay, um, and you know God bless him. The gentleman who paid two hundred dollars a month again did this because I was in the middle of chemotherapy and having trouble, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, oh, we're we're we've we've done a little wobbles. Brady little Brady bunch oh, action. Let's hey, I'm not on the bottom money. anymore. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Da, 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 da. Okay, this is the story <laughs> of a bunch of writers. <laughs> okay, okay. Sorry, we're snoring Sorry. all the money in the world. Yes, but uh, yeah, right, sure. <laughs> but um, no, he did two hundred dollars a month, and then he said he contacted me and said, "I'm only going to do it for one more month." And I said, mm -hmm. "Well, as long as you're going to do that, here's a suggestion: instead of doing two hundred dollars." as part of your regular payment, why don't you do that $200 as a yearly payment? So it'll end up being, um, and you'll still be paying $200 all at once, but uh, it'll count it as a yearly payment and you will get the premiums for a full year. Do that. Oh, nice. I like the fact that you're still around. And he said, oh, that's, great. that's a clever idea. And he did yeah. that. And he did that. And, uh, and that way he still got, you know, uh, um, you know the cat pictures, which are a very small premium, and uh, and um, um, I did. Uh, I have remake chronic, um, which I really should. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, you know some some things come up regularly, and some things don't. Um, so, you know, if you could provide. Uh, um, your own customer service for things like that. I think he appreciated it. And I had one guy who was a um, who was a very likable uh, um, um, video um, video customer. He wanted my writing, um, which is an expensive feature. Um, he wanted my writing uh, once a month uh, writing session, and uh, and then he 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 fell off. He fell off, and he's still paying the amount. And I asked him if he's okay. He says, "No, I got other things to do." But uh, you help people out, you know. So um, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, so th that's a good thing because they're helping me out. Well, and it's sort of the excuse me a moment. I got a cough again. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah, um, Bob. Uh, Bob comments that he's doing some unanticipated troubleshooting, and that we're doing fine. So he's not too worried. But well, I wanted we're to say all that... experienced interviewers. I mean, we've yeah. done this before. Oh, sure. Interviewees. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Particular case, yes. Well, and and interviewers as well. I mean, yes. uh, for sci Radio, we have uh, the Event Horizon, and we yeah. do that every week. And yeah. uh, we we try to we try to highlight uh, writers and artists and and uh, people who are trying to haul themselves up by their bootstraps. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you're not a studio, you're one of us. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> so we all, you know, we we uh, we all try to hang it together and and uh, and help out where we can, and that's kind of the whole point. Yeah, you know, well, it's the whole point I, of doing all of this, really. Yeah. Uh, well, one of the things that I like, 
like about Patreon is that it is that flexible because one of the things I do, besides I have updates to my patrons only story that I've got on my Patreon, I also record myself reading each update um, as if I was at a reading at a con or something so that oh. my audiobook mm -hmm. people can do that. And so I've, you know, I need to talk to you when we're done here because I've had an okay. idea of sure. maybe talk, uh, talking to you about uh, uh, um, putting that Where's on your you radio are? station. Oh, okay. Sci-fi. Sure. Email Kat Carter at sci-fi radio and uh, she'll set uh -huh. you up. She's okay, cool. Coordinator. Okay, cool. I'll talk to her and find out what oh. your requirements are. And that goes for anybody, <laughs> anybody else watching this as well. Uh, if you have oh, good. an idea for a show or you want to be interviewed, if you have a book published, this isn't for people who don't have their stuff ready to go. This is for people who have their stuff out there and need some help boosting it. Contact us at uh, Cat Carter at sci-fi.radio. She's our production coordinator and she will help set you up. C-A-T-C-A-R-T-E-R? Uh, correct. And at, she will help set you up. Okay, I'm typing it out. So C-A-T-C-A-R-T-E-R at... Sci-fi.radio. Sci-fi. Is there a hash, uh, a dash? No, no dash. Okay, sci-fi. Sci-fi. Radio. Dot radio. Dot radio. There's, okay. Right. There's no dot com. It's... It's okay, just dot radio. radio. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I've got that. Um, <clears throat> I've got that. And I will be uh, talking to her to find out your requirements because I have a completed story that um, I, I'm on to, my, on to another one, but I have all these recordings and I'm wondering if they can be worked up and if they're any use to you for your radio station. Actually, yeah. Um, we've been planning on doing, um, sort of, uh, a, an appendix to our uh, weekly show, The Event Horizon, where we have writers read their own work. So that's, mm -hmm. that would be a good fit. Okay. Well, I've just been scolded that we need to get back on subject. It just it just became a business meeting and I just said yeah sorry <laughs> my bad yeah, sorry my bad my bad anyway, my bad yeah. <laughs> but it comes back to that's how flexible Patreon is I have poetry mm -hmm. I've got my story I've got my uh, audiobook uh, stuff for people I've got um, I also uh, scour the net for uh, what I call writer funnies and I have mm -hmm. one of those every Tuesday. So uh, something for usually uh, cynical, uh, snarky, funny, making mm -hmm. fun of myself. But those are my favorite ones. Mm -hmm. um, well, among the things I do, again, I have a because <coughs> um, I do I do movie essays every day. Mm. Uh, but I, oh, 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 you know, and I, and I do that by writing them a few weeks in advance and just schedule them. But uh, one of the things I do, and I've been doing it for about. 15 years is called the remake chronicles um and i haven't done it for a little while for the patreon i owe badly owe patreon one or two with it basically where i talk about um my wife and i uh basically um uh, originated this um on long car rides we are actually we were actually offended uh by people who said um People who say things like uh, uh, remakes were always terrible. No, because frequently the remakes uh. are better uh, than the original movie. And remakes, um, there are some cases where the movie we know that we prize and treasure, mm -hmm. like uh, the Maltese Falcon um, um, or um, the Wizard of Oz or Frankenstein or... Um, uh, for God's sake, the um, um, the Last of the Mohicans, Gaslight, many many others. The remake is the one we know. The remake is the classic. Um, Victor Victoria is the fifth movie in that series um, because it was made uh, in Germany twice. 
Uh, it was made in France. It was made in South America uh, after the uh, Julie Andrews version. Um, so I do the remake chronicles in which I talk about uh, comparing one or the other. And some of them, and some of them amuse the hell out of me that they even exist. Um, um, for instance, um, what, what's it called? Um, um, okay. Um, what's the one? Uh, airplane! Exclamation. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, is yeah. A remake, is a remake. Um, oh. It's the third version. And the first two were serious. And if you watch the original, which is called... Oh, yes. Uh, uh, it was a parody of the Hour, previous... Yeah. Actually see it was, the, the original film was Airport. Oh. Okay, I thought they were just lampooning all of the, different. the original, airplane disaster no, movies. No, Zero Hour, Zero Hour was made in the 50s. Ah, um, huh. And it's uh, one previous version. And, and much of the dialogue is taken verbatim. Wow. Seriously? Taken verbatim. I did not the, know that. The little boy goes to the cockpit. Um, um, you know... Uh, it, the lives of people, the lives of everyone on this plane depend on flying, finding somebody who not only knows how to fly this plane, but also didn't have fish for dinner. Okay. <laughs> that is actually a line from the original movie. Um, no, no, not David McDonald. No, Airplane is not the movie. Airport is not the movie. It's a, it's a remake of. Okay, okay. It's, it is not. It is not. Uh, but the, but I, I the, said that originally. In yeah. the original movie, the navigator is played by a famous baseball, famous basketball player. Elroy. In the serious one. Version. Yes, in the serious oh, wow. one, making one of his one of his movie debuts, which is why Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is there. Hmm. I okay. just remember in the spoof, the comedy one, they 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 had him get up from his pilot seat, and he had um, uh, his uh, uh, basketball uh, his basketball shorts on. Yes, I'm 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 going into that movie more than I should, but I do remake Chronicles every day. Uh, many ver like, like like seven versions of the Three Musketeers, um, um, you know. Uh, and and of I course mean, the movies that get much much worse upon being remade, like uh, um, like Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, um, uh, which was made as a Billy Jack movie, um, and uh, and incidentally, if you <coughs> incidentally if you uh, if you go through all the versions of um, of uh, the front page, one of them is Gunga Din. Gunga Din was a remake of the front page. The writers, okay. got, the original writers, got credit. But Before anyway, we get scolded again, let's get back yeah. around to what our real subject is. I know, I know. You you get this on me. I get. I get here. Hey, you make me feel better, Adam. Day, and this way, it feeds it feeds the fact of doing it every day. And yes, anything you're enthusiastic about. It took yes. me five minutes to explain all that, but but I. So that'll always go. It's it's finding the other things like oh god, I could put that short story up. Yes. Oh god. Oh god, uh, I could. Yeah. Well, Apex the and all the rest of them uh, rejected my story. I'm going to throw it up on Patreon. Uh, my patrons will enjoy it. Yes. Uh, I think it's important to point kitty. out that there's another kitty. Kitty. Uh, <laughs> it it is cat time here on B Cube. Hey, writers and Sunday cats. Morning. Hey, and sorry. Cats. I mean. Candace sometimes will go, you will pet me now. And it just happened to be uh -huh. now. <laughs> right. So I was I was just gonna say that uh as as you work with Patreon, you should periodically take stock of whatever new thing Patreon has just added. Yes. Uh, they have they have dramatically expanded the different kinds of things you can do for your patrons on Patreon. And every now and then the cat is cats stealing the scene back there. <laughs> uh, that one's geeky. That's geeky. <laughs> um, you have to uh, take stock of what 
Patreon is allowing you to do this month that they might not have let you do last month and try and work that into what you're doing. Because yeah. in order for Patreon to really work for you, 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 uh, you pretty much have to move in. It's not like you can run a Patreon and then uh, it's about this other thing that you're doing and that you have all of your other social media somewhere else. Mm -hmm. No, you have to move into Patreon. That's this has to be the it, centerpiece. It has to be what where you're doing, you're, where people can find your art. Right. Yeah. It has to be the yeah. go-to place, and that's why a lot of times. Oh, did I talk over top, Eugene? I'm no, sorry. no, no. Go ahead. If I did, you're making okay. an excellent point. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes I get excited. Anyway, oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, it has I'm to the be way. the go-to place to put your art. If somebody wants to find your art, they. they they go to Patreon. It's not for marketing. It's a location to find you. And right. that's why a lot of times when I have, you know, cute little uh, throwaway poems that I will put on Facebook mm -hmm. or Blue Sky or whatever, whatever social media I'm on, I also put them on my Patreon so that mm -hmm. people who my patrons will find everything that I create um, for them, for anybody. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. And uh, I, I do the same thing with mine. I am, uh, I'm a maker. I make stuff. And periodically I'll post pictures of things I'm making. Uh, it's like, oh, I don't know. Uh, like this. Like that little computer you showed us earlier. Uh -huh. Oh, Sonic Screwdriver. No. Or no. A lightsaber. No, that's, that's a lightsaber hilt. Sorry. My yes, bad. That's a lightsaber. It's 3D printed. Now it's thick. Yeah, it's completely <laughs> 3D printed. And, um, you know, I just share stuff that I'm doing with the patrons because every now and then we'll get something special that, uh, and and the patrons will go, ooh, I want that, you know, like our station logo. And I'm, I'm sorry, this is reversed because this is what the camera is doing. Uh, but it's our, it's a coaster with a little traction rig on, on the bottom so it doesn't sc go scooting across your desk. And we give this I out as one of second. the first. I am curious, because you just mentioned the reversal. I'm curious if the people watching get a reversal or if it is re-reversed. That's, I don't know. I, I think uh, I think they're seeing us reversed. Reverse. I think they're seeing us reversed. Yeah, I think it's also reversed. Um... Why, good morning. Good I'm morning. Sure there. You're back. I've done my troubleshooting, but I will point out to anybody who is uh, on the show that if you has press the little gear box showing down below, it will unreverse your camera. So, like if Troy held oh, a mirror camera, camera to the to the uh, uh, camera, oh. yeah, just like that. Though it doesn't make simple. much difference to me. Normally, when people are holding up their books, you know, we like to make sure people can read them without looking over their shoulder into their vanity mirror. <clears throat> so, so uh, while you guys are contemplating your gearboxes, hey, does that help? Yes. Oh, good. It wasn't, wasn't a critical issue, you know. I just knew that my t-shirt made no sense now. Not that it's a very significant t-shirt, but, you know. I know, but it's always good to be able to come back and hang with the giants of industry, the geniuses oh. that make our daily lives better, you know. Oh, my. Oh, my. It's such ego boosting. Or, um, <laughs> that's a... Uh, Okay, I see another reverse. Okay. So, and also, since everyone knows how much I despise cats, um, oh, I will, I'm going to have to leave you guys to your discussion. But for somebody who doesn't even know what Patreon is, uh, <laughs> and they're sitting here listening to this conversation saying, gee, that sounds interesting. What is Patreon at its core? Does anybody want to answer that? Otherwise, I will. Uh, you can go first, okay. Adam. Patreon is is the right is any any artist's um, passive uh, pa passive income. And what it is is a site where you could say, "Here I am. This is the stuff I make. 
Um, you will get a, a little, some extra stuff from me if you lay in a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars. And we should talk about pricing um, once a month. Um, people who use this very effectively include the movie reactors, who make it a yes. whole dialogue, and and it's uh, and it and it becomes a, a fairly decent income for some of those people, um, which yes. is one reason one reason uh, um, I want to do it eventually, even though my my movies will not be quite as basic as some of theirs, um, <laughs> but uh, but. But you make it. You manage to make it a, a dialogue with your yes. people. You can make you can make thousands a month, or at least hundreds. And some people do a lot better than that, um, as I've noted yes. a couple. But it's a it's a passive income. And if you're just on um, the the site that was formerly called Twitter, um, which I'll never call it X, um, or the site that or Facebook, and you do nothing else. You are kind of wasting your efforts. Uh, synergy is the name of the game, and um, and considering how um, questionable this income <clears throat> can be from time, it's a very helpful thing. You should take advantage of it. Yes, and um, the best thing I like about Patreon is it's a place for me to put my writing, put my art, where people can find me, people can enjoy me. Um, and I don't, uh, I don't have to do a lot of marketing outside of saying, Hey guys, I got a patron. I got a patron over here, <coughs> excuse me. And the other thing is the flexibility right now. I, I don't have Adam's, uh, great bibliography. So my lowest patron is a dollar. That's a dollar a month and you get a, a story, but I'm, it's got enough flexibility that I'm planning on when I get like 50, um, uh, 50 patrons at a dollar, I'm going to close it off and I get, it'll be uh, a higher rate. It'll be five, $2 or well, five. Here's, no, or here's three. the thing. You're, you are making a critical error, Stephanie. And I got to tell you what, uh -huh. what your error is. Okay. Um, first of all, um, your faith in me while, <laughs> while appreciated is not is not quite accurate. The first <laughs> the first tier that I set up was a dollar a month, okay. and I and and I explained on Patreon that no gift comes from that. That's just a hello, how you doing once a month, and I appreciate oh, okay. that very much. Um, just as I appreciate people who do uh, two dollars or three dollars, but I, at one dollar, I just say okay. That's all you, you know, that's all you, you're, you're doing. You're saying hi, and I appreciate it very much. You get a thank you note from me. Okay. Okay. Um, and and uh, $5, you get the first of the premiums, um, which is the cat pictures. <laughs> no big deal. $10 is something else. $15 is something else. And then I do, at, at 25 I do something that I do not, that I do something that you know uh, that I do not expect to have to do, because mm -hmm. people you know people have not paid that much, um, and I also have and you should too, a fifty dollar and I have a two hundred dollar one. Oh, okay. okay. I've got a twenty five for an exclusive poem and a fifty for um, okay. a short story of a uh, thousand to fifteen hundred words. Now, that, as I said, I did get the two hundred dollar one briefly uh, from somebody who was just interested in, in tossing me some off from the bibliography. But you do, you have to do, and you should do strategically some tier which is higher than you expect. Forgive me, folks. Any sane person to do. Okay. First of all, first of all, you are you know don't under you know. Overestimate, never underestimate. This is the same reason you send your stories to the New Yorker before you send it to the three dollar, uh, to, to to the three cent a word magazine. Because yeah. who knows, it might work. I have been paid a dollar a word a few times in my career. It's nice, yeah. But you don't you don't reject yourself from that amount. Now, um, who knows? Somebody. It's like it's like all. You no, know, what are you selling those apples for? 
a million dollars in Apple. That's crazy. I only need one. Okay. Uh, and somebody might, somebody might do that. Somebody might do. Uh, the other example would be the, uh, the episode of, um, the episode of Taxi, where the obnoxious uh, dispatcher Louis De Palma says, "Every pretty woman that comes into my cab," I said, "Listen, I don't have to drive you where you want to go. If you want, we can go to my apartment and we could have wild sex till dawn." And Alex Rieger, another character, says to him, "How often does that work?" He says, "Once." And that's all it takes. That's all it takes. It's worthwhile doing at that point. Now, of course, social yeah. sexual harassment, but 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 yeah, well, that was an the old principle story. is true. Overestimate yourself. If it never comes up, fine. You may be surprised someday. So this is a long uh verbose way of telling me I need to raise my prices. No, you have no a dollar a word is perfectly respectable and perfectly respect and perfectly welcome. Five dollars, ten dollars, fifteen dollars a word. Do somebody, I mean, make a tier you never expect anybody to take the offer. Because somebody will, yeah. Somebody might. What uh, I did, Gene, I, I think you're muted. I can't hear you. Ah, there we go. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. It's because you just never know. Yeah. My, well, my, when yeah. I priced this, I went, okay, uh, a dollar a month is twelve dollars a year, and twelve dollars for a book. That's quite reasonable. Somebody pays me that much, and and then um, I was gonna because I audiobooks are really popular, so I was gonna record it. I'm going. I'm definitely gonna get more money for this. Yeah. So I doubled the dollar, so they're two dollars a month for the recordings, and then um, the uh, the poetry. I said, well, that's even more work because it's harder to it's harder to write um, short than it is write long. Yes. So yes. So that's even more work. So I'm gonna so it's, I price that at five if you want that. And yeah. then I have the exclusive story and poem if for, um, so that's what I've got. Yeah. Um, and the guy the guy who joined at the two hundred dollar tier just to help me uh, again refused the offer. And the offer was, the offer is, um, if you do the dollar a tier for a full year, then I will visit you uh, and appear um, at least for dinner, possibly any any public appearance, uh, anywhere in the continental United States. Okay? For Nobody's $200 ever, a month. $200 a month in, in, uh, in, uh, in a year... That's four. That's uh, that's uh, fourteen hundred dollars. Yeah, that would certainly that's, pay 16, for travel. Actually, sixteen hundred dollars. It pays for travel. It says it says spend a long weekend for you at at the uh, at the uh, Buttworms, Wyoming. I don't care. I will go. I will go. You know why not? You know um, I will be motivated to do that. It's like a convention appearance. You know um, it'll get me there. It'll it'll get me back. I said I did say this is not worldwide. <laughs> I should do a thousand dollar a month tier. You know, I'll I'll visit you anywhere in the United States, anywhere in the world, <laughs> for a thousand dollars a month. Now for a thousand dollars for a thousand dollars a month, you should be offering to co-write their screenplay. Well, for a thousand dollars a month, I should be offering things that are unspeakable. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't expect that. You Let's know, but not go there, please. <laughs> Well, you know, if if you're gonna make if you're gonna do a tier like that, you should have something that that reflects the value of that tier. So, you know, and be prepared to follow through in case it happens. You know? Oh yeah, because Murphy's Law. That's, that's I will write. That's I will write a book for you, a tier. That's what that is. Pretty much. Pretty much. You pay for it in full. I will write. You know, uh, subject. <laughs> Subject to your uh, to the book not being uh, vominous to my uh, to, to my assumption to my to my sensibility. Oh, so you have standards. Uh, I, um, unfortunately, I have at least one book that I would love to write, but I, I uh, that I think would be a bestseller, but that I I refuse to allow myself to write it for moral oh, reasons. Oh, that bad. 
Yeah. No, good. I could tell you in about four sentences. Mm. Okay. Um, it's a thriller about a girl who's been kidnapped and held captive for seven oh. years in a basement. One of those situations. Um, she, uh, she is rescued. She goes back to her, the parents because she was kidnapped as a late teenager. Um, the um, her her father gradually remembers that her kid was kind of that it, that his kid was kind of a sociopath, and he realizes that this girl was not primarily a victim. She was a uh, um, she was an assistant. You know, she was. She was actually the brains behind the whole thing until they had a fallout in the last two years. That's the thriller, and I would make it very hitch problem that I can't write it is that my last name is Castro. Oh. Castro. I can't write that book. I can't publish that book. I can't have my name associated with that book because mm. I will not subject the women who actually live through it to having that book on the shelves with my mm. last name. I can't do it. And even a pseudonym would not be enough. So yeah, there are books that I could write and make a lot of money at, but I would never write that one. Much as I love the concept, anybody who wants to write it can have it. I'm that well, serious that I will. And this this gets to uh, the question of what are people willing to pay to see? And yeah. and for those who think, oh, my stuff isn't good enough, remember that at some point somebody said. Sharknado 5? Sure, why not? <laughs> Sharknado 1, let's put it that way. Now, this uh, is why I mentioned 5, because they did make, uh, what, 5 or 6 of them. I don't know, my... but, but if if that can get greenlit, yeah, and sometimes your it's just... stuff is certainly worth a look. Sometimes the crazy idea, the absolutely insane idea, is actually a great idea. One of my favorite novels ever, and I recommend it to everybody paying attention, is The Pigeon by Patrick Seskind. And that's a book about a guy who finds, who basically kicks and kills a pigeon that's outside his apartment building. And during the day, Lord, and says, please send somebody to clean this up. And then he spends the next 200 pages at work as a as a bank guard standing still in front of the bank, worrying about that pigeon. And that's the novel. He just wow. worries about the pigeon for 200 pages. And I am so much in love with that book. I'm not making fun of it. It's a fantastic novel, but it's like, can you imagine having the goal to, to like send this outline to a publisher? 200 pages of a guy worrying about a pigeon. I just... <laughs> There must be a, a lot of character development in that. Yeah. Oh, it's it's all certainly character. not a lot, not a lot of action. Not well, a lot Aristotle. Action. Aristotle's poetics. Yeah. Uh, defines <laughs> that char somebody plot came comes that from idea. character, but yeah. character comes from plot. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the two are uh, have a circular dependence. Mm -hmm. and yes. So it is perfectly valid to have a plot that consists entirely of something going on in somebody's head. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's been other books about that as well. So uh, if I could think of them. Okay. Because I remember having to read some in school, in college. Yeah. I have to say, I have to say something. Uh, Bob has just sent us an announcement that we have five, uh, um, um, in about five minutes, we have about five cuts this off. So let's let's take one question a piece if we can, if, the, if anybody has any. Okay. Okay. Just because we're wrapping, we must wrap up. It just I just saw his note. Okay. Anybody? So from the anybody? chat, does somebody have a question they want to put in the chat real quick? For one of us. Are we are we so all inclusive that nobody has questions? I've got to give him a chance to type something. And have we already given the wisdom of the universe? Should we? Should you we, have the we, wisdom of the universe? Should we all live now on a mountaintop and say, okay, so life's not a bowl of cherries? Should, should, should that be us? Yeah, life's not a fountain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know that story. Uh huh. I figured somebody would pick up on the reference. 
I don't see I don't see any new <clears throat> questions <throat> coming in. You guys have just wowed them all. I guess. <laughs> I thought the guy on your TV, Stephanie, was looking at you, was giving you a nasty look. Oh, my hubby? What are you doing? <laughs> oh, I thought he was on the that, just, is a, that is a real person. His name is a real person. His yeah, face, that's rich. Yeah, his cool. face was so still in front of the TV that I thought <laughs> that was a frozen image on the TV. I'm sorry. <laughs> a glitch in the matrix. Yeah. <laughs> it's really all sorry. part of our production values here, people. You know, you know, we have cats. God help us, cats. <laughs> yeah, well, at least Candace didn't show her butthole to the camera. So, hey, I'm doing good. Well, I have to tell you, gentlemen, oh, ladies, felines, <laughs> um, that that's not a bad-looking cat. Now, I have a cat, too, but I'd have to take the camera out into the garage, dig past the sawdust, the tools, the... Uh, half-built birdhouses, the wands that accompany me to uh, conventions just to find the spot where I feed the cat on the back side of the lathe. Because um, every morning that damn cat shows up at the back door to explain to me that I need to walk out in my bare feet and bathrobe to the garage to feed him. Well, yeah, that's your job. Uh, but anyway, I love. I, I'm so. Wait a second. I have a public image here. Oh, I love cats. They're wonderful <laughs> creatures. Well, and before we go, I wanted to prove something to you. Uh oh. You, you said in comments before the show started that you were pretty sure Restream wasn't compatible with Safari, and I'm here to prove you wrong. Oh, how would you do that? Oh. <laughs> Pipe yeah, in the wind. The stream didn't die. Okay, there's a smart ass in every you know what happens if you, you know what happens if you use that as a salad bowl? Oh, I don't. I have no idea. You'd be Mike. full of pith and vinegar. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Pity the poor snake that doesn't have a pit to hiss in. <laughs> put it out a window to throw it out oh lord <laughs> help me you guys it has been an incredible pleasure um now silly question we all know that adam troy is an extraordinary writer we know all know that we have read stephanie wipert's stuff thank uh, you. And, and you're a good writer too i, oh, thank I, you. I, I didn't mean to, de to <laughs> deny by comparison do you write the same praise, Jean? Yes. Ah, okay. So what we have here is the one holdout who's never been published in BQ Press. So anyway, just wanted to bring that up. Um, I we could fix that because I'm working on a book. Okay, well you'll have to fix that uh, eventually because I uh, tell you what, Adam, I am still live in awe of the work the the story you wrote for post row alternatives thank you oh that oh um, that one yeah um yeah that one yeah um and uh i uh what i ought to do is send you a couple so you can add them to your 50 dollar patreon list uh because you are a brilliant writer, you. and you wowed every person that – that was a project where we had about five people helping edit it all at once, just a, a dive in and do it project. And Adam wowed everyone in the room or everyone there. And uh, so I, I like – I just have to say a big thank you. And um, your young adult series, Adam. Middle grade. Which middle was grade. Middle Sorry. grade. Uh, no, no, no apology necessary. It's um, it would be Gustav Gloom uh, and various uh, – Gustav Gloom and the People Takers is the, is the first book in the series. Um, and it's a series of uh, ad the adventures of a young boy um, and uh, his girl best friend. Um, 
um, basically in a, in a world of shadows. Um, and it gets very apocalyptic near the end. Um, I'm very fond of saying that it ends with a Doctor Who moment. You've, you've already lost. I, I, I love when a hero says that. When a hero in the worst moment of his life says, you just lost. You don't even realize that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I love, I, I'm very proud of that series in particular. I think you should be. And uh, I have to admit, as I told uh, uh, Gene before I uh, uh, we started, that I honestly, God, hadn't listened to uh, uh, sci-fi radio. Now, how does somebody listen to sci-fi radio? You can go to the website at sci-fi.radio. That is the URL. The URL is the same as the name of the station. You can also download our free player apps for uh, iPhone and Android. We also are available on TuneIn. You can also get us on uh, Roku via TuneIn. Or you can get the sci-fi.radio player app for your Alexa smart speaker. We also have a Discord bot. See if you have a Discord server and you want to add sci-fi.radio to one of the voice channels on your Discord server, there is a link on our How to Listen page that will get you an invite so that you can invite the bot to your Discord server. Mm -hmm. So I there's lots of ways to listen. Oh, we're also on radio.garden, which is a, a worldwide map of internet radio stations, and we're findable on that. Good. So lots and lots of ways to tune in. Okay, I guess um, I'll go ahead and and uh, tout my patron, um, patreon.com slash uh, Stephanie Wipert. You don't have the L in the, the middle. Um, and I've got freebies. You can follow me for free now because they Patreon even allows that. And you'll get like my essays and extra poems and a writer funny every Tuesday. <clears throat> Though I have dollar for story and two dollar for audiobook, so please join my patron. And I suspect that's going to change. You're going to put down something crazy, right? <laughs> you, have to. you have to. Okay. 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 <laughs> I just thought of doing a thousand know, dollars a month. What you get out of it is your the writer will buy will buy himself a car after a year. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'll what name my next you. cat after you. I, I don't know what I'll. Yeah, that's that's it. Something really. I will send you a pencil. <laughs> the sci-fi dot radio patron Patreon page is patreon dot com slash sci-fi radio all one word. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the perks that we offer is the ability to have a radio spot at the top of every hour, thirty second block, uh, every hour around the clock. Every month. And that comes out to something like, I don't know, eight and a half cents a play, which is cheaper than a rec card. So, and you'll reach a lot more people with it. Well, all I know, guys, is you have been very inspiring and informative today. Gosh, I, heard, I sure hope so. I had my thank doubts you. that I'd thank be able you. to contribute anything useful. But thank you. Oh, you guys have all, I mean... There's one thing people often do is they underestimate what they have to offer. Um, everybody has something to offer. And you guys have uh, uh, obviously achieved in your world a lot. And so you have a lot to offer, and that's good. Show me that coffee cup now that you got your reverse off, uh, Adam. Oh, this is a, it's nothing special. New Jersey. New Jersey coffee cup? It's, yeah, it basically comes directly from the oh, stones. You see, my <laughs> coffee cup is slightly different. It says I uh I'm gonna bring a you a coffee cup, I'll be Saturday right back. And Sunday. <laughs> I just grabbed my autistic ones. What is yours? Mine's autis autistic and proud. Ah, okay, Gene. Oh, and this is one of the here's one of the perks that we we gave away at uh, conventions. I would say to people, you know, it's dangerous out there. You better take one of these just in case. 
Oh God! <laughs> and it's got the logo on the side, and this is how you do the. This is how you do inventive. Marketing. I love your promotional stuff, Gene. It's blank. Oh, now that it, it is. It is brilliant. <laughs> there you go. It's, oh. it's a funicular coffee cup. Funic but that, but funicular. But, but nothing, it's funicular. This is you. This is actually, you know, it's not being distorted by the screen. This is its actual shape. Yeah, but it's also got that strange blue screen thing going. It's reflecting something. Show me the top. Yeah. That's weird. So that's okay. Yeah, that is that okay. Is, so, okay, that's different. That's weird. Okay, oh, it, must, so it must have mirror parts on it. Adam it Troy wins the weird of the week contest. Yes. Yeah, there you go. I also have a nice coffee cup with a big circle right through it. I mean, a tunnel through it that, that you can see daylight on, and it's a donut coffee oh, cup. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I, I just don't understand yeah. it, but I'm I'm accepting it. Okay, guys, so you guys have all been wonderful, and thank you much, and I look forward to having Bob, you again. For a and uh, reminder, next week, we have Jim Wright and David Gerald. Oh, good. For last thank you. Please have me on next week. Say again. Please have me on next week. Actually, no, I can't. I'm with somebody next week, damn it. But okay, never mind. I have Jim Wright and David Gerald on the last Sunday of every month. Uh, I, yeah, I, I like those. I love those guys. I'd like to be, you know, I will do that. Some, I've done it with them at least once. But oh, I'll do it I know. I, uh, not next week. I have, uh, I did to you guys what I usually do to them until Jim told me I couldn't. And that was, oops, I had to drop out. This time I actually did have to drop out in the middle of the podcast. But they'd be going on a rant, you know, as only day. I mean, sure. you people who are friends like Adam with uh, David Gerald know what it's like when he's in the middle of a rant. Oh, yeah. It's His rants are legendary. David, I, uh, I, I, I rant, as I did a little bit during this thing, I rant. I rant at length. I have, I have, I have rants. I have pre-recorded <laughs> my rants like from Scooby Doo. From Scooby Doo, I, I can go on for about an hour on Scooby Doo. You're Scooby Doo. Really? What's wrong with Scooby Doo? No, I am Whoa. not. My, 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 uh, my rant is on how useless a character he is. <laughs> useless. His comic relief. Oh, I just killed the, the message of Scooby Doo <laughs> is that the real evil in the world is old white men. Old greedy white men. That's why I'm a fan yeah. of Scooby Doo. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's true. Speaking as a, an old white man, the evil of the world, I believe, is power uh, unfettered. And uh, now yeah, I will well, give you that a lot of old white guys have it, or a lot of it centered in old white guys. But I am, I believe, you could take any uh, social, any person in the world. And if you gave them unfettered power, you would find out what their capacity, individual capacity for evil would be. Power corrupts. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that said, that's who's coming on next week. And then after that, uh, the week after that, we have Karen G. Anderson, uh, along with Brenda Clough and Phyllis Irene Radford, uh, our... Uh, going to have on the uh, author of uh, oh lord I can't tell me I didn't forget his name Bob the Vampire series we're celebrating tax day and he's an accountant that accidentally gets turned into a vampire when he wasn't supposed to you know and, I think uh, I've heard of that and uh, it is uh an accountant or an IRS guy? accountant? Yeah, he accidentally okay. gets uh, eaten and thrown out the window. But when he lands, he lands behind something that shields him from the sun. And then he wakes up and he's a vampire. But he wasn't one of the ones that was uh, being approved for. Um, yeah. For and, his, yeah. And so all of a sudden, this is the misadventures of an accidental accountant vampire. And uh, the IRS... The IRS vampire really, you know, 
gets me because like you can immediately say to him, "What do you want from me, blood?" Well, I mean, that, that is actually. Well, I was going to say, isn't an IRS vampire uh, redundancy? Uh, not as much anymore since they basically uh, they're not allowed to to audit rich people. Uh, yeah. But that's another story. Uh, I found out here. I'll tell you my shortest IRS story I have. I own a piece of property. I rented it out to, uh, okay, I rented it out to a person who needed a place to live and couldn't afford a lot. So I rented it out below market value, but I still pay taxes and stuff. The IRS told me that unless I raised his rent, I could not deduct anything associated with the cost of uh, the property. And uh, Jerks. ask yourself someday, what is driving the, the rents in the United States? Maybe it's stupid policies like that from the IRS. Why, why couldn't that be charity? They said, because I'm not, not charging it. fair market value, it's a hobby. And so, uh, therefore, I cannot uh, deduct the taxes I pay on the property off of the rent. Oh, that I, is that is just that is just yeah. weird. Well, now with that weirdness and the talk, the clock being ticking. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Gene, and thank you, Adam Troy.